Hey y'all, it's me, Bustache Queen, and welcome back to Hot or Hot. Ooh, that was a good one. Today we're gonna be reviewing episode 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. Our queens were paired up with dancers from the RuPaul's Drag Race Vegas live show in Vegas, and challenge to give their partners makeovers that scream drag family resemblance, plus come up with some choreo for a group dance challenge. So we'll be going queen by queen to break all that down, as well as covering some drama surrounding T.S. Madison's critiques, as well as Q and her partner's makeup. So first up, and in the order they hit the runway, we've got Q and her partner, Luna. And for their looks, I was very much getting a Ah, Real Monsters Ablina reference with the black and white stripes, and of course those oversized eyes and mouths. And more than anyone else in the challenge tonight, I thought Q did a great job of making making sure her and her partner had similar but not identical looks. And Q even made sure to remind the judges who the real queen was on the runway when she had Luna carrying her train out onto the stage. And we have seen this idea of oversized monster features on the Drag Race runway plenty of times before with queens like Mo Hart and Gottmik from season 13. But I think Q's take on this concept feels original enough. What she was called out for though was the makeup, which she kind of did as this abstract Picasso clown paint which is also something I feel we've seen many times on the runway before, notably from queens like Milk, who made it kind of her thing for a while. But the queen who called her out on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, was actually Ugasio Cruyente from Drag Race España. And that post written in Spanish loosely translates to, I know I didn't invent this makeup, but Q's makeup in the makeover is literally my face, right? Alongside of Ugasio's face from one of her album arts. And she followed up this comparison, writing, it doesn't bother me and it could be a coincidence, but am I crazy? And as I pointed out, plenty of queens have done this style of makeup as well as this campy over-the-top monster costumey drag. But I feel that's just sort of the nature of the art form of drag. It's a conglomeration of pop culture pulling from all kinds of references. And hell, you can even say Q's wig here is similar to the one Crystal Method wore in her makeover challenge. Which is all to say none of this is truly original, but it is original for Q and I think she pulled together enough different references to say no, she wasn't copying anyone's look here, at least directly. These looks were certainly hot. Where Q and her partner Luna struggled just a little bit tonight was, I think, in the dance challenge. They went for some campier, sillier dance moves, pulling from Michael Jackson's Thriller. And in general, I'd say they looked in sync and like they were having a great time. So I'd give this transformation overall a <laughs> Next up, Morphine and Latina love Dion, whose looks on the runway tonight are relatively simple, I think, when compared to some of the bigger and more imaginative concepts some of the other queens went for tonight. But I think they were successful in communicating this simple, pretty blend of pageantry and like salsa inspired dance costume, which also makes sense for both Queen's heritage and the dance moves that they put into their choreo. And I'll say above anyone else, Morphine of course conquered the makeup aspect of this transformation. Latina looks gorgeous in the mug, but that was no surprise. Her challenge more so was I think in proportionizing this muscular beefy dude. And as the judges pointed out, Latina could have used a bigger hair, perhaps a double or even triple stack, which means like two or three wigs basically fashioned together to create a larger hair and potentially adding more padding to the top of Latina's silhouette just to balance out those huge shoulders. This transformation is solid though. Latina is certainly feeling the fantasy. She looks good. Morphine looks good. It's just that the concepts were a little weak. Plus they did have a small slip up in the actual dance portion of this challenge. Latina failed to get the tearaway part of her dress off, which she did handle with grace, but I will say the rest of their dance felt very in sync and like they kind of challenged themselves to put a little more complicated steps into what they were doing. So the looks I would leave with the warming up and the dancing portion a hot. And next up we've got Nymphia and Juanita Wind, aka Big Bird and Little Bird. And I don't know where the bird thing came from in Nymphia's concept. Like was she just thinking I want to dress in yellow and then like naturally went to Big Bird? I, I, I don't know but I love it. And as Nymphia almost always does, she found such a great blend of camp stupidity with these bird beaks and feathers everywhere and actual pretty fashion. Plus her bright yellow costume next to her partner's soft lavender is just such a beautiful complimentary set of colors. And the transformation is excellent. You can definitely tell Juanita is feeling the fantasy both on the runway and in the dancing portion of the challenge. And actually so much so that I think she kind of outdanced Nymphia, which I guess shouldn't be totally surprising considering these are professional 
professional dancers who literally dance in Vegas full time. But there were a couple of small steps where they were slightly out of sync. Overall though, these two absolutely killed it and I would definitely give them hot. The drama here comes in with T.S. Madison's critique of Nymphia choosing to wear yellow for this challenge. And to be completely fair to T.S. Madison before I read her tweet response, I want to point out she really is not on the panel all the time. So she hasn't had the privilege of seeing all of the wide variety that Nymphia truly has brought to the runway, which I think is a great time to pause and say that I want T.S. Madison on the judge full time all the time. Like, why not? She's a really great personality and I always enjoy seeing her sitting on that panel. Anyways, though, some users on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, were, I guess, kind of mad at her for saying, Nymphia, you're only wearing yellow. I want to see you wear something different. And she responded in a post writing, listen, hashtag Drag Race family. You may not have liked my critique last night and it's okay. I get to see the girls throughout the season and not every challenge. I truly enjoy watching the girls become stars and launching themselves into a life of superstardom. But you, mother tech and stands that think you can aggressively handle me, better do some extensive research. I will you up on any given day and whoop yo live. Play with yo drag, not me. I'm not RuPaul, I'm her hood daughter. Everybody say love. <laughs> and with that, she handled those fans and closed the book on, on that topic. Thank you, T.S. Madison. And next up, we've got Safira and Shakira Crystal. And there's a bit of drama bubbling up in this episode. We learned Safira's originally planned look is not going to work out for the dance portion of this challenge. It is apparently this like 60 or 70 pound gown full of geode clusters and stones. Of course, trying to give a nod to her name, Safira, Sapphire, and Crystal. And the preview of these look pretty cool, but I do think she made the right choice to pivot away from something that wasn't going to allow her to dance in the dance portion of the challenge. That said, what she pivoted to was not great. This was really the first time I looked at Sphere on the runway and thought, this is not right. She's kind of giving me an 80s Madonna prom vibe in this, which I don't love. Plus, she's got those black character shoes on, which are just... They're there and they are there every episode. She is gonna make sure we see them. And even though I don't like the style of what she's going for here in her look, this could have been maybe okay if her partner was also matching in some realm of reality, but she's not. Her partner Shakira is giving us like ice skater dance body suit with a bunch of fringe and a silver ankle boot. Like these two queens are not family. They're certainly not friends. And I'm not even sure they know each other well enough to be frenemies. The family resemblance is they are both in orange. But you know what they say, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. Days, and these looks are rot for me. In the dancing part of this challenge, the Crystals did okay though, but the style of choreo they chose felt kind of like those child pageants with like those big animated smiles and very telegraphed dance moves they're doing across the stage. The energy was good, the style was good, it just was a little uninspired. And finally we got Plain Jane and Lazy Susan, which considering Plain's name is probably one of the best drag family resemblance makeover names ever given to a makeover partner. And RuPaul certainly thought so because she was having a fit in the work room when Plain told her Lazy's name. But aside from just a great name, the transformation is also solid. And Plain here went for a more identical twin family resemblance than loosely related, which I think actually is a bit more of a risk because you're trying to perfectly match two outfits and two mugs and two hairs. It's also a risk because we see the judges, depending on the season or franchise, go back and forth on what exactly it is they want from these makeover challenges. Sometimes they are good and very happy with identical, but other times they say like, no, this is too similar. We asked for a resemblance. And there off the top of my head, I'm thinking specifically of Jimbo from Panda's Drag Race season one. But tonight on US season 16, identical was what the judges were happy with. And I'll say like, were these costumes draw dropping fashion or anything truly innovative for the catalog of Plain Jane's runways? No, but the lines are clean, the silhouettes are solid, and the bodies are body yaddy oddying. Plain Jane absolutely got every single signature part of her drag translated into her partner here, including the sultry, sexy, and sassy attitude, which comes out both on the runway and in the performance from Miss Lazy Susan. She was flipping that hair in Plain's face, dropping into a split, and rolling around all over the floor in the dance challenge, and came damn near close to, I think, just throwing some pearls on the stage and pushing Plain into them. Miss Lazy Susan was out for blood, and and girl, we might see her on season 17. I would like to see it. These two did great and absolutely killed it in every aspect tonight. So yeah, I'm gonna give Plain hats for both parts of this challenge. And the win tonight could have been a surprise, I think, depending on how you as a viewer were looking at this challenge. Because if we're talking only runway looks, I'd say Q or Nymphia had stronger presentation of 
fashion. But when you factor in personality transformation and dancing in the dance part of this challenge, I think it's clear Plain Jane and her partner were the strongest. I think part of the reason they were able to give such twin energy throughout this episode was they shared a backstory of spending a lot of time in the closet due to feeling not comfortable with their sexual identity, but both were able to have moments where they could come out and live their true authentic selves. In the case of Plain, it's in drag. And in the case of Lazy Susan, it's through dance and now also apparently drag. The bottom two tonight though were absolutely no surprise. It's Morphine and Sephira Crystal. And considering this is Sephira's first time in the bottom with four wins throughout the competition, and it's Morphine's fourth time in the bottom with zero wins throughout the competition, I think it's pretty clear how this lip sync is going to go from the outset. But I do want to quickly say I reacted to this challenge and lip sync over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. There's tons of exclusive content there that only my Patreon members can watch. So make sure you join my Patreon to help support the channel and get access to that content. Click my link below to join on Patreon today. See you there. But I definitely went through an emotional roller coaster watching this lip sync because I think Morphine had it in the first third of that lip sync. I was scared. Safira was going for this like real dramatic, understated in a way lip sync in the beginning, which really didn't come alive until the middle and end. But after watching the whole thing, I was like, yes, Safira gave us levels. She gave us drama. She gave us a new style of performance and dance from all the other dancing and performance we've seen from her throughout this challenge. And Morphine did great, but she just didn't outperform Safira. And so we see Morphine sashay away, which is sad, but I think ultimately does feel like the right time for her to exit the competition. She is an amazing queen and one who I have really found myself falling in love with throughout this season. But without any wins up until this point, it just wouldn't have felt right to see her go any further. The exciting thing though is the finale is right around the corner and we've got a final four that is absolutely spectacular. Nymphia win with two wins, Safira and Plain Jane with four wins each, and Q with two wins. All queens which I think represent very different styles and approaches to the art form of drag. So I'd love to know down in the comments below would you be happy with a final four going into the finale? Or do you think that we need to cut one more queen loose and then end up with a final three? And either way, let me know who you are rooting for to win the crown. And finally, let's talk hottest. I'm gonna do two tonight since I think there were two very different aspects to this challenge. In the runway, I'm gonna give it to Nymphia. And in the dance portion, I'm gonna give it to Plain Jane. I also asked my patrons to vote on their overall hottest hot tonight and they've chosen Plain Jane and Lazy Susan. And finally, I wanna say thanks so much to you for watching today's video and to give an extra special Shout out to Ashley Brungart, Child Free Mateau, Dorothy Hall, Felicia Flora, Matthew Burns, Stephen Topher, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen collector tier at patreon.com slash Queen. See you later. Love ya. Bye.